everyone. Today we're going to walk you through how to use the IG chart view found in Infragistics iOS controls. You'll also learn how to use the motion framework along with it too. So let's get started. As you can see here, I've got a sample that shows some data for different countries and it animates between different values. These values can be anything you'd like. This is just random data, but we can pretend it represents data over time. Now we're going to take a look at how we actually did this. Here I've got my Xcode project. Instead of creating it from scratch, I'm just going to start and walk you through what the code is actually doing, as there's not a lot of code along with this. The first thing you're going to want to make sure you do is add a reference to our IG chart framework, which you can do just by clicking the Add button. And assuming you have Infragistics iOS controls installed, you can find it right here under Developer Frameworks. But since we've already done that, we don't need to do that right now. The next thing we'll need to do is to make sure you import the IG chart header file. And then we're going to create a private field for the chart view and data source helper. So now that we have that, we'll create an instance of the chart and we'll make it sized to the full simulator. Now we're going to create some dummy data here you'll see I just have a little list of countries which will represent the different categories. I'm simply looping through the amount of days that we want to represent. So in each day, we're going to loop through each country and we'll create a value and the display. We'll display the country name and just some random value from 0 to 100. So we've got an array of values here. Then we're going to create instances of our data source helper. We'll start off by displaying the first instance of the array inside here, and then we'll bind it to our value property, which you can see is represented off this chart data object. Then we have our column series, which we'll create now. This series is a type of chart that we're going to display. You can use any of our chart types, but in this case, since we're using a category type data, we're going to go with the column series. The next steps are pretty straightforward. First, we're going to create an instance of a column series using our helper method. Then we'll name the series anything we like. We'll specify our data source helper, which we created in the step above. And then we have our first axis key and our second axis key, which are the X and Y. Again, you can name these whatever you like. An important step that you'll need to do here is make sure that you set a maximum and minimum value of your Y axis. Otherwise, if the axis is changed, which can't happen when you have dynamic values, it won't animate. So here, we're going to set a limit of 100 as our max limit and zero is our minimal limit. Next, we're going to set the transition duration property. This is important because this is what causes the animation. So when we go from one value to the next, we need to say how long that transition should take. In this example, let's go with one and a half seconds. The reason we'll do that is because we're going to have a timer that goes off every two seconds. And instead of having it constantly displayed, we're going to have it displayed, animated for one and a half seconds, stay still for a half second, because we're using two second intervals, and then we'll update the data again. With our timer, we're going to have this helper method that we'll call cycle through data. In that data, we're going to loop through the data indefinitely. Then we just need to tell the chart to use that new data. So we set our data source helper to point to the current data array, and then we tell the chart view to update an item at index. So we're going to go through all the individual countries and then update the specific data source. And that's it. So now if we run the sample, we will see our individual countries looping through their data and then updating each item at each index using the motion framework. So there you have it. With a few simple commands, you saw how easy it was to use the IG chart view found in Infragistics iOS controls. And you even learned how to use the motion framework with it too. For more videos like this one, be sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel. And thanks for stopping by.